Stella. Hi. <laughs> what would you say makes you, you know, you? Like, makes you Stella? If I had to think about it, I think I'd say that my strength and my hope. By strength, I mean, as a child, I define my strength by my physical strength. And so the way that I earn respect is by arm wrestling. But as I grew older and I actually started to have nerve damage, I defined my strength as well, more emotional. And so I earn my respect by listening to others and helping them. Mm -hmm. And my hope, I mean that I give out so much hope to other people, probably more chances than most people get. But I do this so that not because I feel like the person will change by the amount of chances that I give them. If I help you, will you become better? So if I give you another chance, will I be able to help you? Stella, would you say that there is some sort of situation that you were placed in where you would provide that person with another chance and they were able to learn from it or were kind of just struggling in their own experiences? My friend and I were really struggling with our dynamic. And so she was really sensitive, but so was I, but she acted kind of impulsively. And so once you would act impulsively, I would get hurt by it, but I would understand because no one's perfect, of course. So every single time I gave her another chance and more hope, I saw her growing. It's not the fact that people want to hurt others, it's the fact that they aren't given the chance to grow. What would you say motivates you to, you know, do the things that you do every day? As cheesy as it sounds, I think what motivates me is making people smile. And by this I mean, I hope to make someone's day so that their day is a lot better than what mine used to be. I struggle with anxiety and depression and that actually has to do with my platform, Teen Suicide and Depression. I felt like my days were really dreary and if someone had looked out for me, someone just did one thing to make my day better, I would have felt a lot less alone. And so I strive to make people smile and that's what really motivates me to do everything that I do. Hey, can you describe a time when you felt most vulnerable and alone? I think the most recent time where I felt vulnerable and alone was when I cut ties with my best friend of nine years. We just didn't have enough energy to support each other, even though we were at our all-time lows. I think I got to the point where we both had trouble eating or even sleeping, and so we thought that it was better to focus on ourselves. But because it was at a time where I was at my lowest, I felt really alone because she was there for me for nine years. She was my family. She was practically my shadow. We joke about the fact that we're each other's shadows because, you know, we stood right next to each other all the time, every day. So how did you overcome that difficult situation? I knew that she was having a hard time. So the first reaction was that I really hope you get the help you need and you grow the way you need to. And if that's not with me, that's okay. But then I realized I had to let the pain sink in because it was a loss of some sort. I got over it with time and with creating new bonds with people who could support me in ways that she couldn't, even though I know that's because, you know, she was going through a hard time. So it's totally understandable. Now, if you had one more day to live, would you have any regrets? And if you did, then would you have done anything differently? If I had one more day to live, I wouldn't have any regrets. I would say that I'd probably start promoting my bakery more because I really just want to destigmatize mental disorders. But I actually found a perfect saying that goes with what I believe. No mistakes, no regrets. Everything that we do, every choice we make, even if it's bad, helps us grow in a certain way. And so I don't think I'd regret anything or change anything that I've done in the past. Mm. Because I'm who I am. And I love that. What are some ways that you are destigmatizing mental illnesses? Well, the first thing I would say for even people that don't have that inside of them, you need to educate. If someone knows what's going on on a biological basis, in fact, they can counteract it or maybe they can understand what someone else is going through. And so education is my first step. The second step is to share resources. A lot of people are feeling sad and bad, especially during this quarantine, anxiety has risen. And so if they have resources to get help, even from their own homes, that'll hopefully help show that it's not something that people can control, but you can control how you react to it. Thank you so much, Stella, for sharing this with everyone. And I'm sure, you know, people who are undergoing these challenges, especially during the situation, um, can definitely relate to what you are sharing. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs>